I want to go over how to find outliers. I'm going to actually, this is Oscar winner ages, and I'm going to use the actresses ages here. And so the first thing you're going to do uh, when you're looking is you need to sort your data. So I'm going to custom sort. Now these are actually technically by year, so I'm going to sort just actresses because I want to keep them. So the idea being this would be the same year. So the year that this 21-year-old actress won the Oscar, a 62-year-old male won Best Actor. It's not a big deal for what I'm doing, but in general it's a good habit, so I do it anyways. I have 87 data points of 87 years worth of data. So I need to first find my first and third quartiles to find outliers. So to find a quartile, I then want the 75, oh, first quartile, 25% of my n, so 87. And then I need 75% of 87, okay? Well, I have to put an equal sign or it won't do the math, will it? Nope. So remember, quartiles always round up. So this is the 22nd value, and this is the 66. Also remember, if this was a whole number, we have to average. If this was 22, I would average 22 and 23. This is actually, though, the values. So I want a actually 23, because um, I have one in the first one. So if I look down here, right to here, this is, I can see that 22 values. So I want to know what value is in the 23rd place. And down here, I want to know what value is in the 67th. And that's just me adjusting for the fact I have a label in the first row, so I have to add one more. Um, you could look it up easily. Remember, these do have to be in order or this won't work. Okay, so I first figured out what value it was. I did any rounding or averaging I needed to. Then I figured out what value that corresponds to. So these are not the answer. This is merely what place value it is. This was back from chapter 3. Then I had to find the 22nd and 66th values. So then I did that. Now the IQR, inner quartile range, is G5 minus G4. What that is is the difference between quartile 3 and quartile 1. Okay. Then I want one and a half times that, so G6. Okay. The way this works is that the lower one is one and a half of the inner quartile below the first quartile. So this is G4, which is quartile 1, minus the inner quartile, which is G7. And then this is G. This is quartile 3, which is G5, plus that 1.5%, so G7. So these are my values. So anyone below 11, okay, there was no one below 11, okay, so I don't have any lower. Anyone above 59, do I have anyone above 59? Yes, I actually have a lot of outliers, so all these are outliers. So in this data set, these actresses would all be outliers, everyone over age 59. So I would have one, two, three, I would have six outliers in this set. So that's how you do it. Now, we have actually talked about the range rule of thumb as well. That's the mean plus two standard deviations. That is another way you will sometimes see outliers figured. Um, for the project though, this is usually done, and if you do the box plot in uh, StatCrunch, these are the outliers they're going to give you. This is how they're doing it. Um, but the two main methods, you'll either see people use this, the interquartile method, or you might see them use this, which we've been calling the range rule of thumb. Um, this is also sometimes what you'll see done for those. And I could easily figure that out. So for instance, if I found the mean, so that would be A2 through well, first average A2 through A88, I think. I'm going to find out. Yep. And then the standard deviation A2 through A88. You can see then this, if I want to do it this way, this would be I15, no, F15, F15, F16. Um, minus 2 times F17. Yeah, it's mad at me. Hold on a second. Yep, 
you can see I get 13. There should be relatively similar. Okay, well, I'm going to actually make myself, I'm going to make my life easier. I'm going to come down here. This is the same thing, only now this is a plus. So you can see there I got 59. So the values shouldn't be that far off. They're not going to be exactly the same, but they should be relatively similar. It depends on your data. Sometimes, again, depending on the data set, one might work better than the other. They might give you different answers. You can look at both if you want. Um, as long as you have a method, you explain to me on the project how you're doing it, that's okay. Um, and again, when you're looking at normality, either one is fine. You're just looking for what data points aren't fitting with this, what are standing out in this case. Looking at these, when you look at the age, you can see I have a lot of 20, some 30s. These definitely, as I start looking at it, stand out. And that's just what I'm looking at there. So hopefully that helps you on how to find these going over both methods that we've been using.